Our week five wildlet of the week is Jamar Chase, who broke out in a big way after a quiet start to the season. Uh, he and Burrow looked like they were back to normal in week five and excited to see it to continue. I found it interesting how much access the Cardinals were giving Chase throughout the game. You'll see here and in a few more plays we'll discuss uh, going forward how far off Chase's cover defender consistently is. It's obviously normal to change the contour throughout the game, but as I mentioned, this is pretty consistent um, and isn't really the most ideal thing when you're playing a guy like Chase. Uh, just provides easy offense to one of the best receivers in the game, affords a burrow the ability to deliver the ball quickly and on time, and uh, affords Chase a lot of room for yak. Uh, Chase is aligned to the top of your screen is running a quick out. Those who have tuned in to some of our content in the past know that we refer to this as ROA or routes on air. Uh, so long as we're attacking off the ball with full strides and aggressive body language, this is pitch and catch for an easy first down. Uh, Chase did a nice job running through his speed cuts all day. No need to really slam or snap into this cut. We're just maintaining the separation created by our stem to push the corner and by his alignment uh, pre-snap and post-snap. Chase's second target is on a slant versus access. Bengals are running an all-slant concept. Before we briefly discuss Chase's slant, just want to note something about the concept. You notice Irv Smith, who's aligned at number one to bottom of your screen, runs his route a bit differently than Boyd and Chase. Burrow is reading this inside out. Should the inside backer immediately expand to Chase, then this ball most likely gets delivered to Boyd. He stays inside here. Ball goes to Chase. Should the contour have been different, uh, hypothetically, on Chase, and let's say they rolled that safety down to bracket him, uh, then the read may take Burrow to the outside slant. This route has to be tempoed, or the break point at the top has to be uh, like less of a pressure step, more of a square break, because if it isn't and it's and it's and He's out of it too quick. Um, the slant window between Smith and Chase is significantly condensed or reduced. Um, Smith tempos his route at the top, running it more like a, a short in, so that should the ball need to be thrown there, there's more space for that slant window or that in-break window. This is similar to how Mike Evans runs uh, this route in camp a few years back. Um, this would be a great way to run the slant from one in this concept should we get press super tempoed, gives a little wiggle at the top to move them, um, and that time would afford the window to be bigger in between the second slant and the outside slant. Back to Chase, this once again ROA, vertical for three strides, pressure step off the third. Uh, really like how he tempos out of the slant, shows that he's aware of where that next cover defender is. Not much to discuss here. Full strides to the slant, run through the pressure step. Here's Chase's fourth target of the day. He's aligned at three in trips to the top of your screen. The Cardinals start in a two-high shell and attempt to disguise their man coverage here. You'll see them roll down with the safety to the trips, and he's going to end up playing man on Chase. Uh, the cards end up with a low hole player and a post safety to protect the middle of the field on any low crosser, crossers or deep posts. Uh, as throws over the middle of the field are a little bit more difficult to defend because they're easier for the quarterback. The safety ends up at nine yards off and bailing versus Chase. Once again, this is really routes on air. Chase does a good job attacking to force his cover defender to bail. And although there's only two to three yards of space at the top of his break here, the safety is bailing with urgency, which means when Chase rolls to his out, he's still able to gain ground and run through it without collision. Uh, should the safety be a little bit more flat-footed in any type of catch variation, Chase may have to uh, give him some type of rocker step to freeze or move the safety um, inside due to that limited space at the break point or some type of crossover at the top to tell the safety opposite. Since his cover defender is bailing out, there's no need to work either of those separation tools here. Uh, run and roll, limiting any loss in speed throughout the break point. One last thing to note, and uh, the importance of it doesn't really show up here because of how much separation there is due to the cover defender's alignment and Chase's vertical stem. Uh, Chase does a really nice job shaving this negative or friendly to the quarterback once he's out of his break. You'll notice... He completes his speed cut and ends up flat at 25-yard line, but makes this reception at the 27. That's two yards of separation that he's maintaining while the DB drives down on the route. It's also two yards of space that he's creating for uh, any opportunity to yak this thing. The closer we get to the sideline out of our break, the more we'd like to finish negative. Chase has his biggest catch of the year on his 11th target of the day, running the big post here off play action. Bengals called a perfect play for the defensive play call by the Cardinals. Cardinals end up in a look where each safety is deep half, and that leaves the mic responsible for running with Chase vertically down the middle of the field, something that the Bengals will take 100 out of 100 times. Now, there's a slight chance that the safety opposite Chase should be getting a little, little bit more depth. Uh, that way he can get underneath or play that post a little bit better. 
um, rather than trying to match the post curl here from Trenton Irwin. Regardless, don't like to speak in certainty when we aren't in the game plan meetings. Chase wins with speed here and stays ver uh, completely vertical until his pressure step to the big post, ensuring that that safety, uh, safety has to continue expanding outside. One thing to note is how well Chase tracks this ball. Um, this is really over-the-shoulder teach tape, high and late hands. The importance of the hands being high so that we limit how far we have to track that ball over our shoulder. Um, now, regarding the late hands, notice Chase doesn't take a single stride with his hands extended to reach for the ball. Uh, we want to limit the amount of strides we take with our arms extended because if our arms are extended, then they aren't being used to accelerate through the reception. It's a great job here tracking and shooting his hands late. Uh, in a more contested situation, late hands are even more important because when the DB is out of phase, he's taught to play through our hands. The later we shoot them uh, to the reception, the less time the DB has to play through them. Uh, Chase is exceptional uh, on the deep ball tracking and has been throughout his career. The final target will break down is Chase's third touchdown of the day, and this should be uh, credited to the Bengals' offensive line as well as Chase and Burrow. You'll notice uh, Burrow, he, while he navigates through the pocket, there's still a ton of time here. Uh, it's only a two-man concept with Chase on the back line dig and Irwin to the flat. It was actually covered pretty well, as it should be, being the Cardinals have a, a whole player to take away the dig window. Uh, once again, like it just doesn't matter. Uh, these two guys are always on the same page. Chase does a great job continuing to work with his quarterback here and simply outruns his cover defender as well as the whole player. Chase's skill set paired with consistently being on the same page as Burrow on uh, off-platform and, and off-schedule plays make him an absolute nightmare to cover. Uh, so that that's it for the Week 5 wideout of the week. I have a feeling this may not be the last time we break down a Jamar Chase performance this year. As always, appreciate you guys tuning in.